Hello fellow space engineers, GopeScope here from the GopeScope Gaming Channel, and I'm happy to welcome you to another episode in our Void Corp series. Today we'll be taking a look at the Beneficiation Mining... So you've decided on a career with Void Corp. The first to welcome you to our family. We're excited to have you on board, and now that you're with us, I promise you we'll never let you go. But you're probably wondering what's next. Well, now that you've signed your non-disclosure, hold harmless, non-compete, and release of liability forms and waivers, you will be viewing some orientation materials pertinent to your role at Voidcore. I apologize for that interruption. We still appear to be having some technical difficulties that we need to work out. Uh, but we can get back into our uh, tour of the mining barge, because we've, we've uh, regained control of our signal, for now at least. So I'd like to start the tour with the outside of the ship, since we're out here anyway. If you look directly ahead here, we have the prow of the ship, clearly kind of covered in glass. The front uh, top section here, these are the crew quarters, which we'll look at on the inside. The bottom here is the flight bridge. As we move aft, you'll see there are a number of maneuvering thrusters located uh, towards the front of the ship, as well as some more photovoltaic cells in here. Uh, this region of the ship is sort of the business end of the ship. This glassed in area is the mining operations control bridge. And in the center here, we have uh, uh, gravity driven um, uh, mining collectors. So, uh, whatever these drones don't suck up themselves uh, should get, or at least most of it, should get sucked up into the ship through this system which actually uses a number of gravity generators, and we'll be able to see that system in action uh, later on. As you look right and left here, we see, uh, or fore and aft, um, we see two comminution mining drones. These are the, the drones that the ship utilizes, and once they're launched, they, they continue to mine and, and operate in a semi-autonomous fashion and uh, give a signal when they've completed their mining so that the uh, mining control um, pilot in here and you could do this from the bridge as well, but uh, this is sort of the intended location for these activities, um, can take control of these drones and uh, fly them back to this collection point uh, where they can quickly offload what they have harvested. As you can see, there are a number of ejectors here, which makes offloading much faster than having you know one or two. Um, as we move a little farther back, you see there are uh, floodlights. Uh, those are the, the mining floodlights. We have more gravity generators. Uh, the reason there are uh, quite a number of them is that we have gravity throughout the ship for, for walking, moving around. Um, there's also a, a spherical gravity generator that's pulling everything in from asteroids that are being mined up into this direction. And then we have a number of generators that are set to repel incoming debris from areas we don't want it to land. So basically, if the, if the rocks head any direction except for right in here, which is where we want it, they're pushed back out and redirected until they do make it in here. We have this section here that's uh, sort of on a pole. Um, it's jutted out from the ship. Uh, the purpose for that is uh, when these ships, or when these drones are actually unloading, a sensor automatically detects their presence and activates this gravity generator which then projects a field out and blocks the debris from making it in here so that it doesn't land on or damage the drones while they're offloading in this vicinity. So basically everything that's coming in uh, would collect somewhere in this area, and then once the drone moves out of the way, the sensor deactivates that gravity generator and everything that had piled up here will be collected uh, once that's complete. So we'll, we'll get to see that in action in a little bit, but that's the general idea of how that works. We have a number of Gatling turrets not too many. Uh, there, there's one at the, the keel here, and we have one uh, port and starboard, and one here on the, uh, the, the dorsal area of the ship, a total of four of them. It is a, a civilian mining vessel, not heavily armed. Those, those Gatling turrets are essentially just uh, designed to take down incoming meteors and, and that kind of thing. It's not a ship that should be seeing any kind of uh, heavy combat. Uh, it should just try to get out of the way if that's happening. So like the uh, Ouroboros, which only had two Gatling turrets, um, the, the defensive systems here are just meant for meteor showers, essentially. So as we move farther back, we can see a connection system here. This is mirrored on the other side. So we're on the, the starboard side. The port side has the same setup. And uh, as you can see, we have nav navigation lights that uh, run along the ship. 
there's a sensor here, uh, and then we have these four connectors. Uh, the way that this will work, and, and it'll be more visible, uh, more readily apparent what's going on when we have a station to dock to that we'll show in later episodes, but this is sort of a Void Corp universal connection system. And so being that this is a, a mining ship, um, it's going to be offloading somewhere or to, to a hauling ship or at a station, and uh, having one connector spitting out the uh, contents of the containers can take quite a long time. So uh, the idea here is this sender connector actually connects to its counterpart on a station or a hauling vessel, and that's what links the two ships up uh, to make sure that the offloading process goes without anything being lost. And once that's linked up, these other three are lined up directly with collectors, which of course are something like this. So each one of these is a, a collector. So they're, they're pointed at that, so when they spit out whatever they're containing uh, in, these, in these holds, uh, they're, they're immediately collected, and because there's three of them rather than one, obviously the offloading goes uh, at a much quicker pace. Uh, you can see we have more photovoltaic cells here. They kind of run along the whole length of the ship, providing a little extra power. There's also a reactor that we'll see over there. Now the purpose of this sensor that I mentioned a moment ago is uh, that these doors are automated. So as you approach them into this airlock, this door opens and it closes, and as you approach this door, it opens and now we, you can see we've uh, entered the ship without pushing any buttons and we've also, except for this slight bug where the doors don't close all the way, uh, we've also maintained an airlock within the ship and uh, because it's a civilian ship we were able to do some more uh, windows and uh, have some nice views so uh, you can, can kind of check out the ship from the inside here. Oop, we did turn on our jetpack. Now as we move farther in, you can see the door will also close automatically. This is the sensor for that inner hatch door, and again, that's mirrored on the other side. There are also two more sensors that are uh, activating or deactivating the gravity generators that are allowing me to walk in here, uh, just to conserve power because there are already so many gravity generators on the ship. Uh, some of them that operate to um, provide gravity for walking only activate when a player's in proximity to use them. So if you're away from it and you don't need the gravity, it's not going to be uh, turning on. And as we move through here, this is uh, the shaft that leads down into the mining operations control room. You can see we land down here with a control room that overlooks the drones. We have a control seat that we can use to control the drones and uh, have a nice view of, of everything that's going on below here. Small area uh, meant for just that purpose. And now if we head back up, we can move into sort of the main corridor of the ship. Uh, right here we have an anti-personnel turret, so if a pirate or somebody comes on board and they come inside here, uh, it's going to it's kind of hidden up there, so unless you see that, that arrow, it would be pretty easy to run down and, and get shot right in the top of the head as you come, come through here. And as you can see, it has a, a line of fire all the way down either end of these, these corridors, so pretty good line of fire for that anti-personnel turret. And along this hallway, uh, we have kind of a neat view of some of the photovoltaic cells and one of the um, Gatling turrets at the rear of the ship there. And we come into here, we have sort of the engineering room. A um, couple of uh, button panels. Here's the main reactor for the ship. And if we look on here, we can see uh, these button panels, you know, toggle the reactor on and off. Uh, they can uh, change the recharge or, or dispense power settings on the batteries and also adjust the running lights or all exterior lights. And on this panel, we have um, port and starboard unloading connectors. Um, activating and deactivating those and uh, control for the Gatling turrets and another button there left open um, for for other options if there's other things that you would like to program into the ship and as always these can all be you know reprogrammed to serve whatever purpose you would like we have refineries below us there are two regular refineries one here and one here uh, and farther forward there is one arc furnace um, so this ship uh, I mentioned is called the Beneficiation Mining Barge. Beneficiation is a mining term that essentially means 
uh, in, uh, improving the quality of ore or, you know, somehow processing to concentrate, um, you know, remove impurities, that kind of thing. So the idea of this, this barge is not that it just mines, but it does do a little bit of refining, um, you know, making, uh, making its payload more valuable by doing some of that refining process, possibly as it's cruising back to a station where uh, the rest of the refining will be completed. As we move forward through this corridor, we're heading towards the prow of the ship. You can see we have another kind of nice view here with all this glass, uh, being that it's a civilian ship. It's easy to do that. It's uh, less of an issue being exposed, so you can have nicer views for your crew. Uh, this this door was also a uh, automatically activated door in either direction. There's an anti-personnel turret that's guarding the front of the ship. Um, that's a field of fire to cover both uh, both of the crew quarters and the shaft that leads down to the flight control bridge. These crew quarters are uh, mirrored on either side, so we'll look at the port side here. We have a, a flight seat and a storage locker and a bunk and a very nice view for uh, the crew member. If they're relaxing, they've got uh, quite a view out front here if they're on a, a long haul. And as we head down, here is the flight bridge. Now, I've, uh, I've added two of these programmable locks. I'm going to be honest, I don't, uh, I don't know how to code in these, but they look neat in a bridge. And uh, being that they're here, if someone knows how to use them, uh, perhaps you can make use of them and, and do some further automation that I was unable to do with uh, timing blocks and, and things like that. So um, much smarter people than I have, have an idea of how to use these well. And, and if you would like to try to make use of them, by all means, um, that's what they're there for. Otherwise, I thought they just had a, a neat look to a bridge. Um, also, we have um, button panels. Same idea as the, the back, uh, except there's outer hatch control. Um, so if you, if you uh, have some intruders on the way, you can you can uh, change these settings so that you can stop people from getting in quite as easily. And on this side we have the running lights, batteries, and gatling turrets again. And of course, the all-important flight seat. And here's one of the uh, the bridge gravity generators. And uh, here we have a fairly nice view of everything too. If you're sitting in the flight control seat, you can uh, can get a pretty good view of, of things around you. So as we head outside the ship, uh, we started with sort of the, the front section, external uh, tour, and uh, I just realized as, as we made it to this, this door, I kind of got carried away and ended up doing the inside tour. So let's finish the, the outside. Uh, down at, at the back end here of the... Um, ooh, just about running into rocks. At the, at the back end of the mining control bridge, we have uh, the antenna for the ship, and we also have the very important ore detection equipment, which in a, a mining ship, that's, that's pretty important. You don't want to be missing that. Um, as we move up, we can see some of the storage in this section here. Here are the refineries I had mentioned, so the, the engineering area that we were looking at is in this vicinity. And here is the primary reactor. Uh, the batteries for the ship are in this area too. And back here we have yet more storage, more storage, and more storage. And some conveyors running out to feed these Gatling turrets that are mounted on uh, some of the, the, the retro thrust pods. And at the rear we have more maneuvering thrusters and the primary thrusters as well. So now let's take a look at uh, mining operation in action. Mining Ops, mining site alignment confirmed. Mining Ops, 10-4, preparing to engage mining system. Attention crew, brace for shipboard gravity disruption. Drones released. Confirmed contact, drones are mining. Mining ops, interrogative. Sensors indicate incoming meteor shower. Are drones in danger? Mining ops responding. Drones confirmed subsurface. 
Meteor shower is no threat to continued operations. And for mining ops, flight control out. recovery underway. Prepare for immediate departure. This ship and its drones will be available on the Steam Workshop, along with the others in the Void Corp collection, at the completion of this series. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more.